The Small Business Show, episode 294 for Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. It's time to small business, folks. <music> Greetings and welcome to The Small Business Show, the show by and for small business owners about small business. Because it's time to small business. Here in Durham, it New is. Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the smoky West Coast <laughs> still, I'm Shannon Jean. Uh, although today we saw a little bit of blue sky, which was Ooh, like a miracle right wow. here. So. That's good yeah. to hear. I'm glad to hear that, man. It is, it is oh, good to hear. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm impressed. So. Yeah. And I'm good. I'm uh, happy to be here, speaking of hearing. Yeah. Um, this we is, got, uh, we got two, two sponsors this week. We have uh, oh, lino.com nice. slash SBS is where you'll go. And, uh, and directmailmac.com is uh, cool. slash SBS. Sorry, directmailmac.com slash SBS. We'll talk about the details of those down the road, but, uh, but if you just yeah. want to visit them right out of the gate. Yeah. yeah, I love getting those new sponsors. It's, it's, it, it's kind of a great feedback loop to like, hey, you guys are doing something right, which we were just talking about before the show. Well, speaking I of feedback that's, loops, that's it, you can always contact us, folks. Feedback at businessshow.co. That is when we would love to hear from you, no matter what it is, send us a note. We'll love you forever. We, and we mean that yeah. like it's sincere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tell us what works, what you like, uh, help us make the show better. Do you like, you know, us, uh, chatting on topics and ideas like last week where we talked about attracting and amplifying luck. I got some great feedback on LinkedIn from that. Yep. Uh, if you don't follow me on LinkedIn, you should be, uh, just go up there and search for my name, S H A N N O N J E A N. And, uh, you should be following Dave as well. We post lots of stuff and then we share a lot of good content up there as well. Not just our own stuff. Right. Um, you can only take so much of that. So, uh, <laughs> It's true. It's a good, it's, it, yeah, it's a good network. And you want to connect with us because we have a pretty broad network of other small business owners. Pretty much everybody that we've had on this show in the last five years, we're connected to up on LinkedIn and you want to be connected to those people too. Trust me. You want to build that network out before you need uh, a resource that maybe one of those folks could help you with or to solve a problem. You want right, to right. have that back, that, that history. You don't want to connect with somebody and ask them for something right away, either no. to like, buy something from me or, you know, uh, that's the worst. I get those LinkedIn things hit up all the time. We connect and immediately try to sell me a service. I don't even know who you are. You know, no, I hate uh, that. So we all, we yeah. all hate that. But when it's, yeah, it yeah you're, you're totally right. If it's somebody, even if I've, cause I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not overly picky on LinkedIn. If you are no, someone that is, that tells me for $5, I can put your podcast at number one in Apple's listings. Then I delete your request. Pretty much every yeah. other request I, I, I accept. And it, you're right. There, there's a psychology to it here. If I accept your request and you and there's like immediately, uh, hey, thank you for accepting my request. Here, here's my pitch to you. No, like the, I, yes. I, I, I yeah. usually ignore those. I mean, I might. I have a, them, I, but, yeah. yeah, I have a text expander snippet that I do uh, with us. <laughs> you're very <laughs> nice to reply to them. I don't. Um, I just give them a boom, boom because I want to stay connected. Because yeah, you just never true. know where it's, it's going to go. No, you're right. But yeah, I. I I also tell them, hey, just a tip, you know, the first engagement shouldn't be trying to sell me something. Right. Right. Well, but yeah. e even if the first engagement is that, don't make it an immediate engagement, right? Like if I'm connected to somebody and I've been connected to them for a year and yes. now they come in and oh, say, that's fine. hey, man, yes. but, but there's like really though there there's no difference except for the level of sincerity right but is it sincere if if they because i've done this to people too where i search somebody out like i might need something from that cat someday so i'm going to connect yes. with that person correct and then when i need something we're already connected so it doesn't seem so opportunistic but it really is that i'm just being it's okay. aggressively That's okay. opportunistic yes, that is okay <laughs> and because the way when i go to connect with someone i always say hey i read your profile it looks really interesting let me know if there's anything I can ever do for you. Right. And then right. I stop. Of course. Yes. And then, you know, nine times out of 10, they don't respond. But somebody does go, hey, cool. Yeah, I heard you on the show or I listened, you know, yeah. da, da, da. And, and so it, it's, it works out really well. That's smart. Man. And yeah. Yeah. It, it just, no, I being can't a, tell being you a good networker how. is a good thing. Yeah. 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 It is. It is. So, yeah. but hey, this week, uh, we're not talking about networking. We've no. done shows on networking. I'm we sure, have. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're talking about meetings, right? Well, meeting strategies, you know, strategies. we, we are we all, I think we're probably having more 
um, formally scheduled meetings now than we did in the past. Now, I mean, I say that and the we I truly mean is the broad we all of us. Um, my world in terms of business, I mean, I, I work in literally the same place that I did before, you know, the pandemic and everything. Yeah, uh, me but, too. But it, it seems like I'm doing a whole lot more Zoom meetings and and just, you know, those types of things than I than I ever have. And it makes sense. You know, we're not going to conferences. We're not going to trade shows and, and we're not getting together. So so there is this sort of intentional let's have meetings. But yes, regardless of all of that, meetings are things that happen. Now, I, we want to talk about some things to make our meetings more productive and hopefully you, you can take some of these tips and make your meetings more productive. First and foremost, I, I, I don't like meetings. I, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> you know, I, it like, I, I find them, I mean, it, they are usually wastes of time. It, it and I don't they mean, can be, certainly. yeah, they can be it. Like if you're not careful, they, they, they almost will default to being that because it, you know, people think, well, I attended a meeting, therefore I was productive. And you yeah, can't right. really That's necessarily right. change that mindset by telling people that that mindset needs to change. You just need to change the way that your, your meetings are. So, but you know, as we were going through this list, I think one of the, one of the first questions you had was, you know, do you need a meeting? Um, yeah, be, exactly. because it, you know, and, and I will add to that with whom, you know, don't just assemble the whole group because two or three of the six people in your group need to meet. You know, I always think of meetings as what is it costing me in man hours, right? So if I bring five people into a meeting and it's a 15 minute meeting, well, you know, I just wasted an hour and a quarter worth of time or I yeah. spent an hour right. and a quarter worth of time. Hopefully I didn't waste it, you know, but if there were three people there that didn't need to be there for those 15 minutes, don't have them there. You know, we talk about spotlighting and, and the, the cost of changing focus. Well, a meeting yeah. completely disrupts your day. I mean, it's, it, that's how it's, I mean, it's sort of how it works. You're supposed to disrupt your focus and be focusing on the meeting. Hopefully you are not, not just check an email in the background, but, um, but yeah, well, yeah. Let, that, that's a, uh, kind of as a, a, on along a similar vein to that on, you know, who should be meeting. I think you should ask yourself, do you need to be there? Yes. As the business owner, as the founder, because you being there changes the dynamic of any meeting, right? And sometimes in a good way, uh, yes. which is great, but sometimes maybe not. Um, <laughs> and so I think you need to ask, and maybe you ask people, like if you're working your way up to a meeting and your things are getting talked about, you got to get updates. I think it's a very good thing to ask, hey, do I need to be there? Yeah. yeah or can somebody send me an email with a quick synopsis when we're done? Uh, I think uh, people like that. Uh, your employees will like that in, in some way. Sometimes they're like, oh, no, no, we need you there because we want to talk about this or whatever. But uh, I've often, um, once I realized I really didn't like meetings because uh, maybe I wasn't very good at it, uh, you know, I, I would always ask, okay, do you need me to, do you need to have me there? Yeah. That's something to ask. That's and a then, good point. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I also think it's the, one of the first things you do maybe even before the meeting or certainly as the meeting starts, what's the purpose of the meeting? Right. Why are we, right. why, why are we why meeting? We, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and, you know, laying it out there, it's like, okay, does everybody understand the purpose? Why we're here? You know, not just, uh, I guess it's, unless it's a, uh, which I, you know, one of those like uh, all hand or Monday, you know, well, I'm not the, a, just not a fan of those. Yeah. We have with, with, um, you know, with Mac observer and backbeat, yeah. we've experimented with, with standing meetings, right? Where okay. It's a, you know, every time of either every day or a certain day, we all get together. And, uh, with Mac observer, we still do this each day. And okay. It, it is a good thing to get the team together That's good. and talk about whatever's going on. I mean, you know, we are publishing news. We are publishing stuff. And there are there's things. Immediate, that, there's an immediacy to it. There's right? an immediacy. Yes, there is. Uh, yeah, there is always something, usually something to talk about, you know, and yeah. and there are things that each of us sees. You know, we're all very observant people, but it doesn't mean that we all see everything. And so having that conversation can sort of immediately 
allow us to mind meld on on a few things on, a, on sort of the topics of the day and make yes. sure that we're not going to put our feet in our mouths, essentially, <laughs> like, you know, oh, you know, like yes. it happens all the time. I, I am the least industry aware person at each of those at, at every one of our meetings uh, for the Mac Observer. Mm, yeah. yeah it, you know, because I'm doing other things too. Right. So I'm not sure. in the thick of it, but, but they are. And so it keeps me from keep putting my foot in my mouth too, most of the time. So it is helpful to have those, but, but I am very, you know, very uh, aware of the fact that, you know, we're spending the time of six people, yeah, sometimes absolutely. seven people, and, you know, more than 15 minutes, even 15 minutes is a lot of time. That is a long time. You know, yeah. and you can see people like because it it can't always be everyone talking and engaged. You know, it will be some of the, the loud mouths being engaged. And, yeah, and you know, and so yeah. so it's a tough thing um, for sure. Uh, and, and managing, managing the loud mouths, but also managing the people that aren't loud mouths. Yeah. You want to, cause you got to create that environment and may, and that may be, uh, what happens when you opt out, right? You may find that if you go back to a manager or a supervisor and say, how to go, Oh, so-and-so really spoke up and you're like, wow, man, they never talk when I'm there. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. And that's just a normal, a normal thing. Um, and so one one trick that I used to do when we were having, you know, meetings with departments or whatever, sure. and I knew yeah. there was just certain people that didn't like, you know, didn't speak up. And uh, number one is I would just always say, hey, would you bring a question to the meeting? And I would go by and talk to them personally. I'd say, okay, would you come in as a technician or whatever? Would you do me a favor? Uh, um, you know, it helps me if to get people to, I just, I'm just, Truthful. Yeah. It's like getting up there, you know, sitting and talking and not getting any response is not a meeting. It's a lecture. And I don't want to do to have a lecture. Would you bring one question? So if you have, you know, four or five people come to this meeting and you've asked half of them, maybe yeah. that that wouldn't normally speak up. And I don't care what the question is. It could right. be, hey, what what are we gonna barbecue on Friday? You know, uh, what are we what what's are we closing early for whatever? I mean, it doesn't matter to me, but it gets them comfortable with asking questions. Well, that's it. Uh, it gives right. them the confidence of being able to come in and say, you yeah. know, my voice matters here. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. Especially if you have younger staff, which I tend, we, we tended to yeah. have. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but I guess on the flip side, thinking about this, you know, what is a strategy for keeping the dominant, uh, voice to uh, in check right so that Dang other people you asked that talking. question i wanted to ask you that question because i'm not oh, good at I that don't. i i don't yeah. know what to do because i don't want to stifle yeah. people i mean that no the, me neither you know neither. It's, yeah. but every organization at one point or, or another is going to have people that yes that are just naturally they they butt in on everything and they have yeah. a thought and, about and maybe everything. they're your, your great salesperson or your great PR person. That's awesome. And they're they're extroverts and they're gregarious yeah. and not going. And you need those people. Absolutely. Perhaps, perhaps you since they already have that type of personality, you could bring them into your circle of, hey, uh, uh, we need to make sure that we keep it keep it on a even keel here. So other, yeah, these, you, uh, these people, oh, I right? like that you yeah. and me, we need yeah. to play, we need to downplay a little bit in the meetings yeah. to yeah. let so-and-so speak up more. That's right. Yeah. Cause I know oh, yeah. I, I have a big mouth. I get up and talk and da, 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 you know, this kind of things. And I don't want to just, like I said, I always just tell myself it's not a lecture, you know, let's do it. And the, I think another uh, looking back at the meetings, I used to have my agenda and I would break it up in pieces and I would give each person something to talk about if they didn't bring anything. Right. It's like, Oh, I don't have anything. Okay. Here, th th I want to bring this up. What do you think of this? Yeah. Because so they read the little, you know, sentence out my, my, uh, part of my outline or whatever. So it puts them in charge of that topic and gets, gets feedback. So I, I, I can recall doing that. It worked pretty well. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I like this idea. Yeah. Next time I'm in this scenario and it might even be, you know, if you've got a big enough team, if you've got, you know, six, eight, 10 people or whatever it is or more, you might even be able to, to create a, a little group of people like three or four of you where you say, Hey, look, the four of us need to pipe down so that those two people that yes. never talk can talk. And that way it's not about any one person and no one feels like they're getting stifled. It's just like, Oh, we're doing a thing. We're, we're, yes. we're supporting them, not 
squashing ourselves like that. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. those people are going to be okay with you pulling them aside going, hey, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to chill out. You got to chill the, out. Yeah. The, I the mean, introvert. I've had it maybe, done to me. Not so much. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> so, but the, and what you're, what you're doing uh, often when you're going to, you know, pulling these people together is you're kind of, I think of it as like data mining, right? You yeah. want, you know, the people that are quiet, man, I guarantee you they're thinking, oh, this is, this is whatever, this is not going to work or yeah. I would do this it. I would me. do it this way, yeah. you know, and this kind of thing. So you really want that inform the, the talent from them. You want their ideas. You want, because there's different and they look at things differently and you don't want just this feedback loop from sales and marketing. No way. It, it, it's no. not, the, uh, it's not the way to go. So getting that. And, and I think just be transparent about that and talk about it. Um, and then, you know, get, you, those are not the people, the introverts that you're going to call in and say, Hey, I need you to speak up. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. No. But the other people you could say, Hey, I need you to be quiet on this meeting. Yes. I want to ask, I want these technicians to feel comfortable in my case, you know, speaking up, da, da, da. Yeah. And, uh, and good. And often, you know, talk about whether I needed to be there. I would often start the meeting, get the stuff out of the way I wanted to ask some questions. And then I would just leave and say, okay, now you guys are going to have your department meeting. Yep. Uh, you know, you mm. don't need me here. Thanks so much. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to follow up, come, come talk to me and, and we'll go. But getting out of the way was really important for me. Uh, I like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good, man. All right. Well, I, I have some, I have some, some very strong opinions, thoughts about uh, meeting time, as you might have heard, ah, but yes. I, there's more to more. this yeah. that I want to share. The next thing that I want to share is our first sponsor, which is lino.com slash SBS. No matter what you're doing with your business, you need a server, right? If you're a server nerd and more specifically, if your company is experts at it, like managing servers, then you're in great shape because you already got everything you need. But if your company's main focus is not managing servers, you don't want to be managing servers. What you want is a company whose main focus is managing servers to manage your server. And that's what Linode does. They are server nerds. They know how to make sure your stuff is going to stay up and running and smooth and all of that. And they know how to do it affordably and economically for whatever it is you need. For example, you know, you go to that linode.com slash SBS that starts you with a $20 credit in your account. You don't need a credit card or anything. $20 credit in your account. Their least expensive server is $5 a month. And that's for a server that's up and running all month long. You can spin it, spin up servers and spin them down and, you know, and then you're only paying for the, the time that you use. But if you leave their least expensive server up all month long, it's five bucks. And that server has SSD storage. So it's fast. You're not disk bound ever. It's on their 40 gigabit network. So you're not network bound ever. You know, it, it obviously you could get a, you could pay more and have a server with more storage or more CPU, or if you need more bandwidth because you're, you know, you're pushing a lot more. Sure. That's, that's how that works. That's how it works. But for five bucks a month, you can get started and you can use their cloud managers so that you don't have to worry about even knowing the inner workings of the server. That's what they do for you. So go check it out. Linode.com slash SBS. This is where you're going to set up your server and really get things running. Our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. Our next sponsor directmailmac.com slash SBS. So look, email marketing is a fantastic way to grow your business. I know that sounds, it, e email sounds antiquated. Did you check your email today? Right. I know. Did you go out and look at, uh, you know, ads somewhere else? Mm, perhaps not. I mean, none of us actively go out and do that. Few of us do, but we do check our email every day. Well, if you are not marketing to your list, your customers, your vendors, whoever it is that you want to be in touch with regularly, you are missing out. And I get why you wouldn't be doing this, because most of the tools out there for creating and sending your campaigns just aren't that easy to use. Well, if you're Mac users like we are here, the great email marketing app called Direct Mail 
It's not a website. I mean, you, you do. You go to a website to get it, of course. But it's a Mac app that runs on your Mac, and it's built specifically for the Mac. So you get your email marketing done in half the time because direct mail takes advantage of all the great Apple technology you already know and love. No more waiting for a slow web page to load or fumbling with a browser or anything like that. It's got all these customizable templates that look great on all the devices that you're going to send this to, and they offer helpful customer service staffed by real humans, not chatbots. And they've got a couple of different plans. You can either pay as you go, like buying postage stamps for each email you send out, or you can buy a monthly subscription so that you can send unlimited emails. It just depends on how you're doing things, but you're never locked into anything. You just pick the right way to go for you. So send your first email com command. I was going to say, I don't know why I was going to say command. Send your first email campaign today with a free download of direct mail. And because you're a small business show listener, you get 10% off all full featured plans. So head over to directmailmac.com slash SBS and see how they can help your business grow. Our thanks to direct mail for sponsoring this episode. All right. So managing meeting time, Shannon, I, you know, yeah. one of my challenging, one of my pet peeves is meetings that don't start on time. Like I've already said, I'm always worried about wasting time. Well, if the meeting's supposed to start at 1 p.m. and it's, you know, we we wait until 105 when everybody's there, you've now effectively said that the meeting's starting at 105. And this is especially true if you have a recurring meeting. And again, like I said, recurring meetings are something you really want to be very careful about allowing. Sometimes it makes sense, but Sorry, most of the time it doesn't. Look at that. That's Siri just wants to talk yeah. to me all the time. <laughs> she loves you, man. Why that happened, but that's cool. Um, so you want to make sure that if you set a 12, you know, a one o'clock start for your meeting, that it starts at one o'clock. And if somebody shows up late, they should feel like they showed up late. They shouldn't yeah. be, you know, I was going to say leaving their desk at one o'clock to get to the meeting. Well, we all just sit at the same desk all day, but they shouldn't be launching zoom at one o'clock. They should be launching zoom at, you know, three or four of one o'clock so that they're in, everything's working. You know, they're, they're ready to go at the start time of the meeting. And you know, I, whenever I give a presentation, if, uh, you know, if it's at a conference or something, you, know, you see, you have, you have a two o'clock presentation, you get up on stage, it's two o'clock. I always ask the room, I'm like, hey, so it's two o'clock. Uh, you guys want me to start now or should we wait five minutes for all of the, the people that, that are late to, to, the, to yeah. getting here? And I'll, I'll tell you what, it's a, always a unanimous vote. Because the people that are late aren't there to vote on it. I uh, like that. You That's know, good. And, yeah. and I think of meetings the same way. You got to start them. Just start them. Don't say we're going to start without so and so. Just start. It's noon or, st or whatever. It's one o'clock. It's two o'clock. Whatever time it's supposed to start. Just start. Okay. We've hit our start time. Let's go. People will get the picture. And if they don't, then you have a conversation with them. But I, yeah. I always give people a pass, you know, like, okay, you showed up late. Well, you're going to figure out that we start our meetings on time here. And it is okay when you bring somebody else into the, into the, you know, the team, tell sure. them we start our meetings on time, but then you got to yeah. own that because they are going to expect that of you as well. You know, Correct. and, yeah. and, and so how, how about, be and, and how about end times? Do you say that oh. when you start? Every you meeting say, must have an end time. Yeah. <laughs> must. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you lose. You just. I mean, you, you wind up spinning your wheels, and one of those, you know, alpha aggressive PR marketing people can spin you in circles, and you could just be there for uh, way too long. Yeah. Right? You know, every yeah. meeting has an end time. Yeah, and so and that's the, actually what's the best. It, well, go ahead. Good. Ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that's easier these days because you you send out calendar invites a lot of times. Yeah, so it's that's like, true. You, know, you put that end time in there. But yeah, no, I I like if a meeting is is ever scheduled to last more than fifteen minutes, I have a lot of questions about. Yeah. Does what is this meeting for? How many of the people that are invited truly need to be there? And yeah. you know what what are we doing? We got to stay on track. This is the reason that. 
Well, some people in my in my town want me to run for like, you know, school board or city council or something. But the the, the school board or city council would hate me. I mean, th- th- you know, because I would show up and be like, OK, uh, so we're setting an end time to every meeting because they just blather uh, on for hours. Yeah. Oh, like, hours. No. Yeah. And you know what yeah. else I would do it, if I were in that scenario? I would remove the table and chairs from the room. Everyone must stand. Yeah, like that's, I, that, dude, that changes everything. <laughs> standing meetings, everybody's paying attention and interested yeah. in truly getting the job done and out of there because you don't want to stand around forever. But if everybody's yeah, lounging like around in their chairs and you know can check their email and dick around on their phones or whatever, I don't yeah. know, whatever. It just doesn't, it goes, it goes in circles. It's a waste of time. It does. Yeah. 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 It is a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, And you know, one, one, uh, I guess, tactic or philosophy that I I recently uh, learned about that I want to talk about today is uh, this, and and it's referred to as this rose and thorn technique. And uh, I was listening to a woman talk about meeting strategies and I I can't lie for me. I can't remember her name, but if I do, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, And she was uh, discussing this concept of getting stuck in a, the positivity trap. And when I heard that, I, it really resonated with me because, huh. I, you know, I'm always looking for positive things, always trying to tease out the optimistic response to, er, to everything. That's just my personality. Sure. And that works in, in, in many ways. It's great and it helps lift everybody up and everything, but it also can really cover up and cause problems. And with this rose and thorn concept is you ask two questions for when you're getting updates or you want to know how projects going or sales or whatever, you name it. Yeah. And it's those two questions are, well, okay, what's working? So everybody's, oh yeah, this is great. We're, we've signed up new customers, and but you must follow up with what's not working. Ah. And that causes the, um, uh, and maybe it's out here. I'm already thinking, maybe you flip it, you know, Hey, what's not working and what's working. So you can end on positivity, but I'm not sure that yeah, matters. I, um, I actually kind of like the idea of, of end on, on, on the, what's not working. Because, well, it makes you think, right? Well, it gives you like, as you're leaving the meeting, you have an idea of what you're going to do, like an action. Because if yes. you if you start the meeting with what's not working, you'll come up with your list of actions. Then you get to sort of ba- bathe in the the serotonin filled delight of yes. hearing about all the great stuff that's going on. Now, for some people, that will spur that will fuel their action, right? But but for a right. lot of people, it's uh, the pain of of you know oh we're like we have a thing that's bad you know it's not working i need to make it better so i don't know i think there's I, yeah there's yeah there, anyway there's i like this it. idea yeah. to it. i like yeah. it too uh, i'm gonna read some more about it I'm, I'm sure i'll be bringing it up you know a bunch more times here and and, and i'm pra- gonna start practicing it so that uh even for myself yeah. you know that you if, if you're a uh you know just a crazy optimist and things are always going to work out. I think asking that question, what's not helps to guide you into the next thing. And then you can come back and update on that, you know, the next time you. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the thing is, is if you're doing it right, right. You talk about the great, you start the meeting with the good news of how you fixed the problems or are fixing the problems you identified last time. time. And then you end the meeting by saying, okay, now what are we going to, what do we need to do? What? So therefore, what are we going to do before we get together? again i like that yeah. that's yeah, yeah there's there's something i i i i sound like i'm a, a a slave driver with these meetings because i i really am focused on getting the heck out of there i mean i'm impatient and i do not like spending all my time in meetings you know it's it's just it's, oh, yeah. it's rarely meetings are rarely productive well, and, I think you have little meetings all the time. Yes. Like it could be in the hallway. It could, well, you're not uh, on site or whatever, but you could, you know, yeah. uh, a little interaction in Slack. It, it yeah. could be considered something like that. Oh, you know, I, if uh, I'm having an interaction yeah. with Slack with someone, it it is often that it's like, all right, let's, let's fire up the video chat here and, and yeah. let's talk to each other for five minutes and, and hash right. this out or go through whatever we need to go through. And then we're done. Like those things are great, but these, I you agree. know, scheduled standard meetings can be the the you know the death of a business because you feel like 
you're being, well, I, I attended my meeting today, so I did my work. You know, I get a gold star. Right. Well, yep. yeah, but th th like nobody gets paid for attending meetings. I mean, maybe you do, but really the company doesn't earn any money when you're attending meetings with each other. You know, you, you that's generally not how things like that go. Now, you do need to keep everybody on the same page and all of that. So, so there is that necessary interaction. Sometimes it's necessary to get groups together. Now, so I say all that and, and I do have all of my hard and fast rules with as soon as COVID hit, you know, we had an interesting thing that first meeting after sort of the world hit lockdown status and, you know, it meant different things to different people in different locales and, okay, you right. know, but, but we hit that point and, and we got to the meeting and everybody in the meeting was sort of laughing about, you know, oh, look at this, you know, the rest of the world has to figure out how to work from, from home. You know, we've got them beat. We're all set here. Are nothing there? Yeah. nothing right. changes for us. And I, I don't know why, but I, 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 I had a moment of clarity where I said, wait, you know, you're right, but this is going to affect us too. So be ready to be about a week and a half behind the world because everybody's freaking out now. We're probably going to be freaking out in about a week and a half when we realize all the things that we normally do to leave our houses, yeah. we're not yes. going to be able to do, you know, and it, like right. for me, it's not rare for me to be home and not leave the property for, you know, four or five days in a row. But then I do leave the property, you know, or would normally leave the property, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And yeah. and so I was like, we got to be aware and, and careful with that. And so. Sure enough, for each person and over the course of the next, you know, few weeks, everybody kind of hit that point of like, OK, yeah, this wow, this sucks. Like, OK, you know, yeah, it sucks. Um, and and so we've found that, you know, I've found that I had to allow for more of the just sort of venting, you know, quote unquote, wasted time to happen at our 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 daily meetings. It doesn't happen every day. But, oh, I but see. there yeah, is that sure. therapeutic time yes. where people just are, I mean, th we're the only people other than our, our families, except for the people that are, you know, single and living alone. And then like, truly this group might be the only group with whom we, we interact. Yeah, and so yeah. it was really important to kind of loosen the reins. And I even made it clear, like, we're going to loosen the reins on these things a little bit. We, we need good. to allow ourselves the opportunity to do this. If it gets out of control, we might have to tighten it, but, but you know, everybody knows like we're here for each other. We are the social circle that we all have right now. So, you know, let's, it's okay to, to have that conversation. And it, yeah, I, I think that's really important to recognize. It is just yeah. uh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So great. you gotta, you gotta allow for a little therapy and things speaking. I agree. Of therapy. Speaking of therapy, yeah, business therapy let, time, Shannon. Let's talk about some business therapy here. Uh, one thing that that has um, frustrated me a bit in our Facebook group, which is currently the small business support group, is the lack of interaction. You know, we've got about 300 members up there. And it w the goal of that group is to kind of create this... Uh, you know, loop a feedback loop of people that are listening to the show that might have questions that don't want to email that want to connect with the business owners that we uh, have on the show. And, you know, we, we have failed miserably at doing that. There's very little <laughs> interaction. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's you, me, your wife, my wife, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing, even right. though there's 300 plus people on there, uh, we, we haven't done a good job of connecting. And I, and I, I, recently really struck me because I have another group that I started uh, related to my fashion business uh, in, the, in the Poshmark Unlocked book that I, I published last year. And I've got a third of the members that are in there and the interaction is exponentially more, you oh, know, yeah. with people posting questions, with them commenting. I post, you know, daily one, you know, maybe once a day. Maybe that's the difference. You know, I, I'm only post once well, a week in the yeah, book group. I mean, I had to shut down a Facebook group for our Mac Geek Gab podcast. It had about 3000 members and was overrun with uh, people 
asking questions and helping each other. And the reason I shut it down was because it was taking some of our time and distracting I us. I, I would be a good problem for us to have. Yeah. 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 But I mean, right? like it, yeah, it, yeah. because it wasn't about the show was why we shut Correct. it down. It was, it was, we Correct. were, we suddenly became the unpaid stewards of this group yeah. of Facebook users yeah, that had nothing to do with yeah. us. But yeah. And, and so, and, and then of course it, at Mac Geek of the show, we get, you know, it easily a hundred or more emails a week that, that we have to answer. So I'm feeling this frustration and it's like how I've succeeded with it over here. How come I can't succeed with it here? You know? Right. Right. And I, so, I don't know what the answer is, Shannon. I don't either. Uh, I don't either. I, I, uh, we're going to a couple things I think we should do is one. I think we should really rebrand that group. Okay. Uh, or even start a new one. I'm not sure, Ooh. but, uh, I want to really focus on founders and I really want to create, add value to what we're doing for founders and small business owners. Um, and I really want to focus on helping small businesses recover and, and lifting these people up, you know, mm. that, that these, I, I really think of these people as heroes that are running these small businesses, uh, no venture capitalist, you know, just yeah, right. or no venture money, just the guys that are and, and women that are just grinding it out every day to create something from nothing yeah. that drives the bulk of our employment and the economy. And, and they really need our help right now. And so I, I'm going to, you know, put together a few ideas and concepts. I would love some feedback from people that are listening to the show, feedback at business or connect with me on LinkedIn and send me a message. Um, we could use your help. It's it's really time to give back to the small business community. If if your business has suffered, which like so many of other, ours have, and you want to come on the show and talk about things you're doing to recover or or you need help, we, we'd love to have you on the show, get some exposure for your business and be uh, exposed to our our network of you know thousands of, of small business owners. Um, yeah. So we're going to change it up a little bit because I want it to be, I want it to add more value. I think we need to tend to the garden a little bit, Shannon. I do too. Like we, if if we want this thing to grow, we need to be in there every day. I I agree. I, I, you know, I I would commit to that. The time will come when we need to be out of there every day too. Like that's what they do. Right. You know, but, but we, we, it, it, the garden's not growing. And so we, we will be there and we hope you'll be there with us. And, and truly it's for all of us. So, Part oh, of yeah, the part sure. of the reason I kind of when I say, you know, that the time comes to step out and clearly, you know, I, I chose it too soon here with this one or we chose it too soon here with this one. But it's because it's not our group. It, it Shannon and our Shannon and my group. It is our group. Right. Like it. Yes. It truly is for all of us. Uh, I want to be able to ask as many questions as I answer for people. I want you know, I, I oh, want yeah. it to be a two way street, but I'm happy to 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 make it a one way street for a little while, you, you know, like I'm happy to to do the work to grow it and and build that that sense of what our community will be down the road. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so we're gonna yeah we'll have some new new ideas that we'll be trying things out and and I think you you made a really good point, Dave, as we were talking before the show is to continue to try new things and you know we we're having some uh you know some level of success with our small business uh, pocket guides. We have the mistakes guide out that's selling. We just launched the partnership guide and it's moving up the charts uh, on Amazon right now. You can find those at businessshow.co slash guides. We have a new guide that we're working on right now that I'll be talking about in the coming weeks. That's going to be all about employees and employment that I'm excited about. So we're going to continue to do that and we're going to continue to grow this out and just we're going to change and try new things and uh, we're going to be adding the value to people and over time also developing a revenue stack of different revenue streams that uh, will be coming in for years. You know, and and to that end, let us know what it is we do that, that you find most valuable. So that's, that's the feedback I'd like. That's my ask of all of you this week is, 
Let us know what it is, what value it is we bring to you. Something specific. And it it, it, it doesn't matter if you think it's like, oh, well, that's silly. No, it's not silly. We, we really, truly want to know so that we can continue to focus on that. If we, you know, we do a lot of different things here. Like Shannon said, you know, we, we throw things, we, we try a lot of different things. Let us know which of those things is, is truly valuable for you. Um, Absolutely. That, yeah, it's helpful. All right. Cool. Well, that's Great what show. I got. I love talking about it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, really gets me thinking about new things. I always love new challenges and uh, I love being here each week. Thanks for uh, for listening. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for doing this show. Hope you find it valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good week. Keep living that charmed life. See you next time.